London, Angel of Essington, 1994. Two gangs of armed men set out to commit robberies that will net them many thousands of pounds. Not an unusual occurrence in a major city, you would think. But what would happen if, incredibly, the two gangs had targeted the same place on the same night at the same time? Throw in a third gang committing a burglary on the same street, and you'd be forgiven, I'm thinking I'd let my imagination run away with me. But this is no lock, stock and two smoking barrels prequel. This actually took place, and I'm going to break down the brutal, bloody and mind-blowing set of coincidences that left one man paralysed for life and four banged up for 20 years. On Tuesday, April 5th, 1994, Colin Meeks and Gary Mullins, two criminals from London, planned to rob Colin's store in Islington. It was a store on this night they knew would be holding a significant amount of cash. Armed with a sawn off and pepper spray, they felt confident that on their own manner, they could pull the job off and get away with a substantial amount of cash. Neither men were heavy duty players in the London underworld, and this was their first step up to armed robbery, according to the lead detective on the case. The Cullen store was based on Liverpool Road, Islington, in close proximity to Mark Spencer's, which will play another crucial role in the night's events. Arriving at their target destination, the two men failed to notice four other shady looking men hovering around near to Cullen's. Focused on their mission, they went into the store, spraying the staff and threatening them with a sawn off, making off with £8,500 in cash in a raid that was remarkably quick and efficient for a first job. The staff must have been terrified and in shock as the two men swaggered out of the store back to their mini metro park close by. Jumping in the front seats of the two-door car, they must have still been jacked with adrenaline and delirium as they turned the key in the ignition. Then, bang, bang! The explosions must have been deafening as two shots smashed the back window of the Metro, which they knew very little about, as two slugs lodged into the back of their necks. The attackers snatched the bag in the car and walked down the street nonchalantly examining the contents. As they did so, police cars screeched around the corner, not for the robbery, which they hadn't been alerted to, but a burglary in progress at the Marks and Spencers at the exact same time as the robbery and the second robbery and shooting had taken place, all completely unrelated to each other. The police gave chase as the robbers ran slinging their gun over a nearby pub's wall, but the officers caught two of the perpetrators. You have to guess whether the police chasing the men knew they were armed, as if so, was incredibly brave, bearing in mind the perpetrators had just shot two men in cold blood. An ambulance was called and the two London robbers were rushed to hospital, whilst the police began to try to piece together what had happened. After agreeing to give Colin Meeks immunity in exchange for him speaking about the events, it became abundantly clear he knew nothing about what had happened. His partner in crime was now paralysed from the neck down, but Meeks had miraculously been relatively unscathed, with the bullet missing vital muscles and spinal cord. All he could remember is committing the robbery, with all going to plan before blacking out and waking up in the hospital. He was literally clueless to how this could have happened, or who the attackers were. He was insistent he had no enemies of that magnitude and was secretly thinking the police could have had something to do with this. Although the two men in custody refused to speak, the police soon found out who they were and were horrified to see they were serious criminals from Northern Ireland with strong links to paramilitary organisations. One of the men, still at large, Samuel McLean, had spent 12 years in prison in Northern Ireland on gun charges and was believed to have supplied a weapon to one of these paramilitary groups that killed a soldier. The other three men were Samuel Wilson, Joseph Brown, and a fourth man, Kenneth McMillan, who was guilty of a previous armed robbery in London with McLean. These men were heavy armed robbers, way out of Meeks and Mullins' league at the time, and it's an incredible stroke of bad luck that on your first heavy job you were successful, then karma rears up behind you, and you are left fighting for your life in hospital. What makes this whole scenario even more bizarre is that the police are only attended to due to the alarms going off in Marks and Spencer's due to another gang committing a burglary at the same time as the two sets of robbers were targeting Cullen's store. After the dramatic events, the police who chased the armed robbers said they had no idea they were armed and dangerous and thought they were actually burglars from Marks and Spencer's. In the following weeks, all attackers were apprehended and it was confirmed Gary Mullins, one of the London robbers, was paralysed from the neck down. Meeks went uncharged as was the deal with the police but this crazy episode would not put him off a life of crime. He allegedly went on to commit more robberies, according to the police, 
until he switched up his criminal career to that of a hitman and was jailed for life for the murder of businessman Dale Harvey in 2005, over a decade later. Gary Mullins, who was in hospice care, choked to death after enjoying his only pleasure in life, a bottle of wine and takeaway, which was only allowed after his family signed a waiver, allowing the staff to give him the food and drink. The judge at the Old Bailey, Michael Coombe QC, in his summing up at the trial of the four Irish robbers, said, it is obvious you are ruthless men, utterly selfish and utterly determined to enrich yourselves, no matter how many people may have been hurt, physically or mentally. The three gunmen, McLean, Wilson and Brown, were convicted of two counts of attempted murder, two counts of conspiracy to rob, robbery and firearm related offences, and weighed off for 20 years each. The other man, McMillan, who did not take part in the attack, was given 12 years for a separate robbery. This is the craziest story of coincidence I have ever heard of in the course of a robbery. And no matter how meticulously you planned it, you couldn't have foreseen the collision of three separate gangs on the same night, at the same time, ending up on the same plot in your wildest dreams or nightmares. Karma definitely had its day. And if there's a better example of why crime doesn't pay, this will be up there as the pivotal example. Thank you so much for listening. If you can hit the likes, hit the notifications, hit the subscribes. If you haven't done already, please get over to www.inquirymedia.co.uk, which is our main platform. We've got other blogs, uh, other videos. There's going to be lots of different content going up on that site as well. And if you would like to get in contact with myself or one of the team, contact at inquirymedia.co.uk with any stories that you feel we should be covering. Uh, we'll be happy to have a look at them put it on the list and do our research, etc. We're particularly interested in potential miscarriages of justice. Um, anybody in prison who you know, who you feel shouldn't be there, and there is good evidence to back that up because we'll be happy to cover those cases in detail, do our research and due diligence, and look at those aspects as well as the documentaries we do. Take care.